Okay guys, so in this tutorial we're going to go a little bit deeper and more general than just sound. We're going to talk about signal processing. So one of the most important concepts in signal processing is the Fourier transform. If you've never heard of this, you can go to wolfram.com and look up the Fourier transform. So if you've never taken uh, calculus or some sort of advanced university math, this probably won't make a lot of sense to you, but if that were the case, you probably wouldn't be doing this course in the first place. The Fourier transform is essentially in a in more of a conceptual way, it lets you view the frequency components of a signal. So you convert a signal from the time domain into the frequency domain, and then you can use the reverse Fourier transform to go from the frequency domain back to the time domain. So now if you look at these equations, you'll notice that f of x, the original signal, is a continuous function of x. And so we call this the continuous Fourier transform. Now since we're working in MATLAB, and we're working with arrays and matrices that won't really work for us. So we need a sort of discrete version of the Fourier transform. And appropriately, it's called the discrete Fourier transform. So let's look that up. Okay, so We've sampled f of x, or sometimes we call it f of t, since you know if we're looking at a sound signal, it's varying in time. So we sample f of t at a certain frequency delta, so that's the sampling period. And then we assign those values at each sample to f of k, and so f of k becomes a discrete signal. One thing to note from last time is that we talked about sampling and quantization, so this is sampling only, not quantization. So once we have f of k, we can then calculate the discrete Fourier transform f of n. So this brings us to the next concept is what's the function in MATLAB that actually calculates the discrete Fourier transform? So there is an algorithm called the fast Fourier transform. Also known as FFT for short. It calculates the discrete Fourier transform in n log n time. So if you were to, if you ever studied algorithms, you know about O of n, big O notation. So if you were to calculate the Fourier transform naively, you would get an O of n squared algorithm, which is slower than n log n. We don't need to worry about the details of the algorithm, just that MATLAB has a function called FFT. So as an example, let's do a sine wave. So let's calculate the F of T of sine wave. So now let's try to plot the FFT, or the transform signal. And so you'll notice it looks kind of weird. Um, this is not what we want to see. So this is just a 
and intermediate step that I'm showing you. So if we go back to the definition of the Fourier transform, so let's look at the discrete Fourier transform. You'll see that it's the original signal f of k times e to the power of negative 2 pi i n k over big N. So the exponent to the power of i where i squared is negative 1 is going to give you a complex number. So there's going to be a real part and an imaginary part. You can use Euler's equation to see this more easily. Cos theta plus i times sine theta. So there's a real part and an imaginary part. So if we look back at big Y, which is the transformed signal, you'll see that each of the parts here has a real part and an imaginary part. So typically when we're plotting the FFT, we usually just look at the real part. So there's a method called real in MATLAB. So suppose I have some number 2 plus 3 times i. Real will just drop the imaginary part. So now I'm going to plot real times big Y, which is the F of T of little y. Okay, and you can see that there are two spikes, one on the left and one on the right. So when you're looking at the uh, frequency domain, the Fourier transform, you really only need to pay attention to the left half. So this area is the lowest frequency. This area in the middle is the highest frequency. And because if you look at the Fourier transform again, there's this 2 pi in the exponent. And also that it's a complex number, which then resolves to cosines and sines. The Fourier transform is actually periodic. So it's periodic in 2 pi. And so when we look at the continuous Fourier transform, you'll see that the signal actually repeats every 2 pi. So when you look at a signal, so let's just look at, see if we can find one. Okay, this is a good picture of what I'm trying to explain. So usually the way that the Fourier transform is visualized is that it's symmetric around the center. So we only show from negative pi to pi in the frequency domain. And then anything you see on the left side of the zero point here is just carried over to the far right when you're looking at the discrete Fourier transform. Another thing to notice is that the transform signal is the same size as the original. So size big Y is the same as size little y. So the important thing I want you to grab from this is that 
the sine wave has only one frequency. All right, and so that's what we're seeing here. That's what this spike is. Now, so when we look at real signals, so we're going to look at some voices soon. What we're going to see is there are going to be multiple frequency components. All right, so when you speak or when you play an instrument, they produce different sounds because they have different frequencies playing at the same time. So we're going to go back to the Hello World from the first and second lecture. Equals audio read. Hello world. Read. All right, so remember that D has two channels. So we're just going to look at the left or first channel in the FFT lectures. So I'll say uh, big D is equal to F of T of little d. So I'm going to select all the rows and then the first column. Now I'm going to plot the real part of the F of T of D. All right, so you can see the multiple frequency components that show up. This is my voice. So I've downloaded a female version of Hello. I couldn't find Hello World, so she just says Hello. I'm going to read that in. So I'm going to play it just so you know what it sounds like to do this. Hello? Okay, so the female voice is more high-pitched than the male voice, and so mine is a male voice. So what we should see then, I'm going to take the FFT of the female voice, and I'm going to plot that. So this doesn't tell us much because it's just a plot by itself. So we're going to use some of the things we learned before. Okay, I'm going to use subplot. I could try to plot these on the same plot, but we have a problem, right? So if we look at the size of D, it's about 85K, and we, if we look at the size of F, it's only 8,000, so it's a much shorter uh, hello. And so the problem with that is we plot them both on the same axis. One's going to be really short and the other one's going to be really long. So you can't really compare the frequencies that well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use subplot. I'm going to plot the female version up on top. And I'm going to plot the male version, which is me, at the bottom. Okay, so remember that the signal is symmetric, right? So I only have to pay attention to one side. And they're relatively the same length on these plots. So now notice that the female voice takes up higher frequencies and my male voice takes up lower frequencies and it's loudest on a very low frequency. So the Fourier transform can be used to analyze sound signals or any kind of signal that you want to know the frequencies of.